Welcome to this Getting Started tutorial for Make My Grades. We start by adding classes. The easiest way is to import via Dropbox. Sample class file, which we dropped into your Dropbox automatically, you can then use that and adapt it to enter your own classes. Either all of them in the one file, or you can separate them a different class for each file. I'm going to add this one. And it's that easy. If I needed to add another class, I can do that quite easily. Tap on the class to add students. Once the names are entered, then I can tap on the info button here. I can add a photo. I can edit the display name. It's worked out what the first name and last name are based on the convention that you've entered it. You can add extra classes, set male, female, date of birth, student ID, add some general notes, all those sorts of things. It's a very similar option with the classes. We could add a photo for the class. We could change the display name and we can have notes on the class. We could duplicate the class, which just adds all the same students to a particular class um, if you wanted to do that as well. The core business of this app is student assessment. We can access student assessments, we can assign them, we can edit them, store them, retrieve them all from this particular page. We can access it from the top right or down here at the bottom left. To create a new one, simply click the plus. We can give it a title, something nice and creative. We optionally add a description. We can add a subject. We could like to define it some more. Once we've added a subject, we've got the option to add a strand in a similar way. We can add curriculum. There's two that are in there by default. There's others that can be added. Uh, there's more that are being added regularly. Uh, once we've selected our curriculum, we just step through. Until we find what we want to add. You can add multiple. You can see there they are there. And now it's time to decide how we're going to assess. Are we going to assess with a check mark, which is a simple pass or fail? Is it going to be a score? Is it going to be by a grade? So you can customize lots of options within each of these. Let's start by looking at the check mark. The basic options are not yet assessed, achieved, and not achieved. We can add more if we'd like to. We can obviously customize what it says there. And then we can customize these as well. Lots of icons to choose from. You can see there's tester. We can assign it results. If we were to do a different one, again, we could choose the previous subject very easily, add more curriculum, could have a look at score now. We've got the option um, every time that we give someone a score, it'll automatically assign them a descriptor from a rubric that we create. Similarly, automatically assign a grade based on the score that we give. At its most basic, we need to add a maximum score. You can see down here, because we've chosen these rubric and grade options, if they get 90%, it's an A. We can add a descriptor in here. The easiest way to add descriptors is going to saved rubrics and we can import those via Dropbox. Very similar to the class lists, you get a sample rubric file uh, as soon as you link your Dropbox and you can adapt that to enter your own rubrics rather than type them in on your iPad. Um, much simpler. Um, you can bring in other ones that you've got saved in other places. Uh, so if I tap on that, it imports it for me, tells me that it's been added, and then we've got there a list of things um, that we can we can use. So if I chose vocabulary, it gives me that for A, B, and C. I can go and I can change that to anything that I like. <clears throat> Another very handy feature is um, the automatic personalization. So I could add a little bit extra to this one here and say, first name, you 
used. And he slash she is awesome. Now, if I go back, I've just got my three options. We can add as many as we want. Um, we can also choose to apply weighting. Um, so we just set that in a very similar way. So if that was going to be 22.5%, um, whatever you need it to be, uh, let's turn that off. For the moment though. Um, we can then add another assessment right from within here. Uh, this time we're going to choose the grade option. So we give it a title. We can add this description down here. Something more meaningful than what I just wrote perhaps. And we can assign from within this page here. Um, but I'm going to go back and instead of doing that, I'm going to click on edit down here and then I can choose all three of these and then it says different options. I'm going to assign to all students in all classes. Now, if I had of had of selected an actual student and I was down here and I did the same thing selected these and I went to assign. It gives me the option to add to all students in seven Jacobs, add to Bernadette Jones only. So I don't have to just add to every single person on my list. I can add more specifically, but I have to have selected those first. So here I have the first of my uh, four different pages in which I can view the assessments and edit them so this is the student view, and you can see here, um, as I tap on a student, it gives me the different assessments that I've assigned to them, and I can mark them accordingly, enter in different scores. Um, very straightforward, I can tap on a new student, and then I can enter in their scores. Actually, that's my wife, she better get an A. Now, if I tap on, the row, it takes me into this detail page. And so I can then add notes. And I can select from the rubric. So instead of just saying, yep, she gets a B, my favorite feature of this page is being able to select from the rubric. And so we can just choose the descriptor that best fits instead of just tapping a letter. Uh, you can see there it's personalized that Christy is awesome. If we head back, you can see that there's that little pencil to indicate that a comment has been left. On this page, we can filter by the subjects, so we can only show those that are English. Um, there's two other pages by which we can um, edit the student results. Um, one of them is back on the assessment page. We can just tap here on results and we can see how all the students have gone um, on that particular assessment or in the one here. We can quickly go through and, and assess it. We can also tap and hold and it will bring up um, the option to add a comment for that student. You can see once we've done that then a little pencil comes next to their name. We can sort, um, tapping sort first of all we'll put from the, uh, the best result um, down uh, then the reverse, so you can see those you haven't yet assessed really quickly. Good way to get an overview of what's happened in that particular um, assessment. And the final way that we can view assessments is my personal favorite, and that's lightning mode. Sounds cool, and it is cool. We can choose assessments from down here, so I could put all three of these assessments um, together and very quickly you can see we can grade. Um, just being able to have access to all of them at the one time is great. Um, down here the assessment details um, takes you back and so you can see exactly what you've put in for that particular subject. You can set presets so right now I've got those three I can save that as a preset and give it again incredibly creative title 
Um, and now if I clear those, I can restore very quickly that way. Um, but I can also, in my presets, load preset, choose my preset. Obviously, you add more and it's a bit more meaningful. Um, so another great way to assess is in lightning mode. Done. We can print this page. I can go down here to reports and I can print. You can see it gives me comment, very meaningful comment on that particular one. If I wanted to, I could filter. So I can only show a particular area. I could say I only want to see when something is not achieved. And so it won't show that because it was achieved. And then whatever filters we've applied to this page, that's what's going to print. Similarly, whatever filters you apply um, to this page are going to show up in the collated report. So the collated report will just take everything um, that we've got so far and put it together. You can see down here, I can go to the next and the previous student. Um, it will print everything that is checked down the side there. If I don't want to show what the raw score was, but that's fine. I can just uncheck it. I can print via PDF, CSV, or email. The CSV will just upload straight away to your Dropbox. Uh, the email will open. You can choose who to send it to. Um, and that just, it's just plain text within the email. Um, the PDF, once you create the PDF, then you can either email it, you can save it to Dropbox, or you can print it via AirPrint. Now, this edited comments, if I tap on edited comments, it allows me to type in. I can also add the comments from the assessments um, within the report. So you can see I chose to write comment. Very, very meaningful. Add descriptors. So that's from the rubrics. And if I tap on curriculum, it adds in the curriculum links that I put into that um, subject. So then I want to go to PDF. Creates a PDF for all the students. You can see, obviously, the comment is in there. We haven't edited the comments for the other ones, but highly customizable. There's an attendance feature as well, attendance page. Choose whether you want to have just one roll call each day for each class, or you can have multiple. Um, we can have multi-day view so we can see up to 18 days at a time you can select the whole class and similarly uh, we've got it so we can choose what we want to display we can have in here as well resolved and resolved lates and absences and all that sort of stuff so we can customize those like we could uh, for the checklists check marks on the assessment page uh, we can pick a particular date skip forward skip back yeah, lots of options we can also tap and hold um, and stuck in traffic um, and once you do that then we have the pencil that appears and we can we can print as well. So we can just quickly do today's absentees, today, select dates, lots of options there. Thanks for watching this tutorial. That's been a basic overview of the setup for Make My Grades. If you'd like more detailed help, then check out the frequently asked questions. Look at the more specific tutorials on different components of Make My Grades. I hope that this app is a great blessing to you. Bye for now.